five, four, three, two. Da 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 da. I know. All right. Let's see, somehow. All right, welcome Connor, to the. Go ahead and just get it over with, Connor. What? He's been dying to tell us something. All day. Oh, welcome into the banter. What? <laughs> just. You feel like I feel like you're holding that in such a specific way. I love Prime. <laughs> I'm not paid to say that, but they did send us this. All right, and I wanted to I, flex. I, if you guys don't they mind, they sent it to Brody. I'm lying. I do have a story I would like to. Hey, Trevor. I'm Trevor, dude. He's trying you know, to. I, I like, can't hear you all like the way from here. My body's right now, in ketosis right? now, so like I can hear and multitask. At you the know, same we're time. like at work, right? Connor, this is what I've been dealing with this whole time you've been out of town. Trevor's oh, been thinking that he's better than everyone. That's, I'm really sorry about that. What are, you, what, are, what are you getting up? What are we doing? Are you going to slap him? No. I'm just going to change this. Oh, never mind. It's, it's right. Oh, okay. That's my bad. What just happened? He's trying to get you to get off your phone. Is what just happened. I'm two minutes away from issuing a phone ban on the entire office. I love it. Hmm. I almost hit my car. Let's just limit. sit in silence. I only have 2.8 cards left. Let's just sit in left. silence until he's off his phone. I- cool. All right. You guys are you guys are ridiculous. Connor, floor is yours. Um, Thanks to Prime again. Um, I already did it. I already told him that Bro- they sent it to Brody and we drank it. You were on your phone. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Connor, floor is yours. So I have uh, I have like a couple things I want to say. This over Thanksgiving, I was um, I was in Michigan and in Indiana. <laughs> Wow, that was very impressive. I mean, that was the most accurate. <laughs> that shot was I've ever extremely had. impressive. It like grazed my beard. Um, and so I was, yeah, I was in Michigan and Indiana. Stop. And pay attention. He's trying to tell us a story. I was gonna pay for airplane and throw. Have it. Have either of you ever been to the to the Midwest? Uh, yes, we went to Missouri, brother. All of us. Yes, that is true. I remember that now. Um, I I discovered something that is extremely interesting. It was interesting to me at least. I saw a squirrel in Indiana, and I swear to you, it is the size of a small beaver. Oh, it's that time of the year. Mm-hmm. They, be, they, they be getting big for hibernation. That's like when we went to Texas, they had the yellowtail squirrels. That's true. Squirrels I just differ remember, a lot. I just remember them being like, oh yeah, our squirrels are pretty big here. And they pointed, and I saw this cat <laughs> in a tree, a <laughs> no. fat cat. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. We were, I was playing disc golf with one of my friends, and I was just like... Blown away. I, I got to Google this. It was like that. Yeah, it was like, like Google well, Midwestern. Phone ban, no, phone ban. Mid, well, no, I I issued it so I can oh, okay. look at look you at you can't look at you squirrel, are banned. Midwestern squirrel in Indiana. Midwestern squirrel. You think that'll pull it up? Maybe I don't know. I hope it does it justice on the phone because it was. I cannot explain to you right now how just big the like squirrel squirrels. was. It was it was chunky, dude. It was a big squirrel. Like legitimately, it could have been a cat. What is he doing? It was a. It, I thought. I thought just, it was a small beaver. No. Is it a fox squirrel? I just know that it was a squirrel that was really big. Look up like large squirrel. This is fox squirrel. This is a big Indiana yeah, that's squirrel. A, that's a big squirrel. I bet it's I a mean, fox squirrel because these things are big. Those are huge. I bet it was a fo- a fox squirrel. Maybe. Because this, this guy's holding they them up. Mean? Are they invasive? It just. Acted like a squirrel, except Fox for it bent in every branch it was on way more. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this thing. You just hold That's up your phone. Huge. Let me see. You had to have seen a fox squirrel. I can't see That's it. That's the size of a cat. It was massive, though. And I. Those things look My nice. friend Caleb was like, I'm so glad that you were amazed by this because no one here understands. They're just like, oh yeah, those are squirrels. But like, that's a massive squirrel. And I was like, I do understand. Yeah, you've seen like scrawny So guys. the fox yeah. squirrel, also known as the eastern fox squirrel or Bryant's fox squirrel, is the largest species of tree squirrel native to North America. Despite the differences in size and coloration, it's sometimes mistaken for American red squirrels or eastern gray squirrels in areas where species coexist. Interesting. Interesting. So it basically just looks like a giant squirrel. It w- yeah, it was a... It was a big old squirrel. Are fascinating creatures to observe when you see how fast they move. Yeah, their little bodies. They use their tails like a counterbalance, yeah. don't they? Uh, yeah. If you've ever watched the Mark Rober series, That's about, there's where like I saw three it. videos or so of him doing these these like squirrel obstacle courses in his backyard, and it's some of the best YouTube out there. Mark Rober is just the best YouTube out there. He's he's. Did you, there. Have you seen the egg drop video, Connor? Nope, I have not. Did you watch it? I watched it this morning. Incredible. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> The man at one point realized he called NASA for help. Oh. 
and was basically told that they can't help him. We well, used to because, work for NASA. Yeah. Precursor. Um, because the what he was trying to build was a guided missile. He just didn't realize. Ah. And he didn't realize it. So they said the people who know how to help you solve the problem that you are having legally cannot tell you how to solve the problem you're having. And if you learn how to do it, you're probably going to have a call from the FBI. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Well, because I mean, he was learning. He was basically trying yeah. to make a guided missile, mm-hmm. and so then he had to shift gears. It was very exciting. His the whole premise was he was trying to drop an a, uh, egg, almost said a squirrel, an egg from space and have it survive. A squirrel gotcha. could survive though if it weren't Prima, for the oxygen thing. Prim, um, give him the prompt. Okay, here's a prompt for you. Okay, Let me I'm give ready. You a prompt. We saw this. Would you rather the other day, and we were just fascinated by it. Okay. Would you rather get hit? By a baseball thrown by, let's just say this, uh, a major league pitcher, one of the strongest in the in the league. So he throws, he can throw over a hundred miles an hour fastball. Can I choose where he hits me? Um, in the back. You're getting okay. hit somewhere in the back. That not hurts. like not the worst place, but not but a that great. Would place. hurt really bad in the back. With would the you base, rather get hit with a baseball? With a baseball, or would you rather have that baseball be dropped from space and hit you in the back? Well, I'm guessing it's a trick question. Because I feel like the trick question is that maybe the baseball doesn't actually pick up as much speed as we would think. Or maybe it's reverse psychology and it does. I mean, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to I'm not going to think about it too much. That's not any fun. I'm just going to say it makes more sense to me to let the major league baseball pitcher hit me in the back. Right. Yeah. It would. But, but the terminal velocity of a baseball. Is only seventy four miles an hour. Wow, so it would be like twenty five miles an hour harder for someone to throw that. That's crazy. One hundred nine. Like, isn't that crazy to think you could lay down, have somebody drop a baseball from space, and that because we first thought about it, and it would do was, less damage than a, a pitcher throwing it. Right, because he was basically in the video, he was calculating the terminal velocity of an egg to test whether or not it would break, drop from that height, mm-hmm. and he slingshotted it at eighty six miles an hour. And he was like, that's actually faster than what we calculated is the terminal velocity. So if it doesn't break at 86. And I was like, so you could drop an egg from space. It could land on you. And it wouldn't even inconvenience you to get hit by it. Like it would break on you. It would sting a little. Sure. It's going to probably be fine. But it'd be know. like sting pong. Yeah. That's crazy, I, think, I feel like it would just like the inertia would build up so think. much. Here's but one it, for it, you. Friction, baby. Here's okay. one. So now that you understand the prompt game. I understand the prompt game. Would you rather have me, me, hit a golf ball at you or have that golf ball drop from space? Well, I'd assume that I can't It's basically be. the question of can I hit a golf ball faster than the golf ball's yeah. terminal velocity? Well, for a baseball, if the terminal velocity of a baseball is 74 miles per hour, I do believe a golf ball would go faster because that's like the point of the, the dimples. And dimples. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like you can, I don't know how fast you hit a golf ball, but I feel like you can hit a golf ball faster than you could throw a pitch. In my head, that makes sense because yes. of how much the... Like twice as fast. Yeah. Well, I don't know about me, though. I'm yeah. going to say... You could probably double yours, yeah. I'm well, s- faster than I could throw a pitch, yeah, but yeah. faster than a... No, not like a major league guy. Like, a, yeah. Um, That's what I'm saying, me hit it. We're, we're estimating how fast I could hit a golf ball. I'm just going to say you can, yes, you can hit a golf ball faster than its velocity. You're right. Isn't right. that wild? Like a that lot. That is wild. That is really. Golf ball is actually slower than the baseball. No way. Yeah. yeah. And That's I said the same ridiculous. thing as you, Connor. I was like the dibble technology. We looked up the, the funniest one. We, we were just getting fascinated by terminal velocity because of like how ridiculous that prompt is. And like the ping pong ball one was even more shocking to where like sting pong is far, far worse. Yeah. Than the ping pong was like five, was it, it was 20 like, miles an hour. Yeah, mm. so like a sting pong, so is, sting pong way is way like worse three to four times than a bad. ping pong ball getting wow. dropped from space and hitting you. <laughs> but imagine crazy. just laying there waiting for a ping pong ball to hit you from space. Even though you, if you knew the science, you would be horrified. Yeah, in my head, I think that thing's gonna <laughs> go through me. <laughs> You'd be thinking you're gonna. It's die. gonna make me bleed. It's gonna yeah. go through my body. Yeah, that's crazy. Terminal velocity, man. It do be doing that. <laughs> okay, so can, may I tell you another story? Yeah, yeah. You may. This is actually just the Connor. Show. Yeah, Connor's we're actually corner. playing this around Welcome you. Welcome to Connor's Corner, presented by Prime. Um, no, the breakfast not a sponsor. Milk. Please. Uh, so, as you guys know, I've been having some it's problems acidic. with. It's so s- acidic. As Good you guys, stuff. as you guys know, I've been having some problems with Gabby's car. Everyone at home, Gabby is my wife, and her car is her car. What's the problem um, right now? We just like it's so it's a 2018 Ford Focus. It uh, 
in my opinion, it has way more problems than a car f- from 2018 should have. It's got more problems than my car from 1987. Um, we'll just ask Connor why. But just like BMW just like knew how to make them. Just ask cars, Connor why though, it has so. so many problems. He'll tell you. Um, so anyway, there were like recalls on it whenever we <laughs> whenever she tied. bought it. Mm-hmm. And it got we got them fixed for under warranty and everything. But that still made me really angry because I was like, why do you make a car that's broken? Anyway, check engine light is on. Every once in a while, it'll say that the transmission's overheating. Oh, that's a fun um, one. Which transmissions don't overheat the same way an engine does, so I don't really understand how that happens. It's got to be an electrical issue. Anyway, so some of this stuff is happening. But we're like, okay, I feel confident driving it to Michigan, though, because it never leaves us on the side of the road. Oh, I also forgot to say that every time we get gas, um, it, oh, takes yeah. about, it takes about five starts to get it to start really roughly, and then you have to rev the crap out of it for it to run normal again. That's the weirdest um, one. That, one. that one is very annoying for a car with a push start. Um, and also, I wonder if it's the fuel pump. No, it's not the fuel pump. It's called a vapor control valve and it's letting too much vapor in. Whenever, oh, I just know yeah. because my truck was saying that the transmission was overheating mm-hmm. and oh. it was the fuel pump. Well, I know exactly what's wrong with the whole too many times to start it thing because I looked it up and it's like a $40 part. I could hmm. change it, but I'm going to make them do it for free because I have the warranty. Um, anyway, so I felt confident driving it to Michigan, which was That's fine. where they make Ford. True. That's very true. Detroit. Great, great job, Trevor. Um, and <laughs> and uh, so we drove it all the way to Michigan, and then we drove it another four hours to Indiana mm. a couple days later, and then we drove it 10 hours back here and did fine the whole time. No problem. That's you know, excellent. except for getting it started after getting gas was annoying. Yeah. But like, <laughs> it, yeah, it works. It yeah. works, everything. It's pretty good. Until we're about four hours from Lynchburg. Mm. We're in this quaint little town in West Virginia. Back um, and by quaint, I mean very sketchy, um, scary even. Uh, and we're at this really scary gas station with a Piggly Wiggly beside it. Mm. And um, we get gas and start the car. And as soon as I hit the button to start the car, the windshield wipers start going off. And I was like, that's interesting. The windshield wipers aren't on. So I finally get the start car started after mashing the gas and revving and everything like the normal getting getting it started after getting gas thing and the windshield wipers are on absolute full blast going no. as fast as possible what? and it is bone dry outside <laughs> yeah so it's just like and anytime windshield wipers go off and the windshield is dry it just like hurts me so bad and so they are going full speed absolutely as fast as they could max and Gabby's windshield wipers go fast and I'm like huh that's interesting <laughs> and so I'm flipping the the actual switch on and off like every which direction like spraying the water spraying on it too because now I'm like doing that and it they just won't go off and I was like okay whatever I'm just gonna turn off the car and restart it turn off the car whole entire car is turned off windshield wipers are still going <laughs> oh no so open the door get out of the car because I think sometimes you know for it to turn the radio off you have to open and shut the door yeah. windshield wipers are still going like crazy I was like, well, at this point, I need to start the car back up because it's going to just run the battery dead if the windshield wipers are just going berserk. And so I turn the car back on with nothing. Windshield wipers are still going like crazy. So we pull over because we're in the gas station at this point and we go into the Piggly Wiggly parking lot. And I'm like, I don't know what to do here. And and so I just (laughs) so I just go under the hood and I pull the fuse box out and I figure out which fuse is for the windshield wipers and I just pull the windshield wipers fuse. Smart. Cuts them off. We're good to go. I get back in the car and she says, but what if it rains? And I say, well... Just plug it back in. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just plug it back in. She's like, I think you should plug it back in now. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea because they're just going to go like crazy and it's going to ruin your windshield wipers. And she was like, well, you already said that the windshield wipers need to be replaced anyway. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> and... I bet you plug it back in and fixed it, though. And I was like, <laughs> and so I did. I tried to plug it back in. Plugged it back in. Bunch of wipers don't turn back on. But you also cannot turn them back on. Ah, yeah. So <laughs> there it is. Fl- I'm flipping the switches, and the windshield wipers will not turn back on, even though I plugged the fuse back in. And we were like, okay, that's really annoying. And... At this point, we're freaked out because we're four hours from home and it's supposed to rain. <laughs> oh, no. And so we just drive. I'm like, forget it. We're just going to drive. Like, we, we've got nothing to do with drive. She was like, but we don't want you to figure this out. I was like, we need to get home first before we figure it out. So let's might, we might as well try to outdrive the rain. And there starts, it's like about to start drizzling. 
and we're both kind of freaked out. And of course, while I'm trying to get the windshield wipers going, I accidentally spray the water. And so the water sprays all over the windshield, but there's no windshield wipers to wipe That's the water hilarious. off. Nice. And then eventually the windshield wipers are sitting like halfway on the car like this, and they just go, zoop, and back down, and they work like fine. They're totally fine. <laughs> and then this morning... I kind of did that to the... Uh, I don't think I ever told anybody this. I kind of did that to the van once. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the foundation van. Well, there was a lot of ice on. I don't think I actually they ever actually broke. But there was a lot of ice on the. <laughs> there was a lot of ice on the windshield at one point. This is like a year ago, probably probably more than that. And um, Hunter and I are trying to get the ice free, and we get like enough free that I'm trying to get it free with the wipers, and they kind of get a little stuck, like almost back into their retracted position. And then they were kind of like that for like a few minutes as I was driving. And then they kind of whoop, went back to where they were supposed to be. Huh. Fixed itself. <laughs> so Ford just have a way of being goofy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so then this morning, Gabby was on her way to work after dropping me off because I left my truck keys with Trevor. Different story. And um, we were having like a play date. Yeah. And uh, and she texts me and she says, it's pouring down rain and I can't get my windshield wipers to turn on. Mm. And I texted back and I was like, okay like can you like make it work and she was like i can't see anything and i was like okay that sucks and then she said never mind they started doing the thing again where they're on full blast but now i can't turn them off i was like well that's fine just get to work <laughs> and then she got to work and she said it was all fine so she turned so the car off turn and it turned off? off yeah that's new oh interesting yeah, yeah. so that is bunch of fantastic twists. that car is a mystery i know so we have an appointment with the dealership but it's not for another two. You got to get yourself like a CX five, like carbon edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy with that. Those are nice machines. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> so yeah, that is that is frustrating. As a guy, listen, coming from a guy who on my way to Pennsylvania, I blew a tire on the side of the highway, Connor. Uh, um, like forty minutes out from Hershey, and I was on the side of the road for three hours because AAA absolutely gave me the runaround. Dang. In the and it was the freezing cold, and I had a baby. <laughs> That so sucks. as a guy who also had some car struggles, yours sound worse than mine. And so therefore I'm with you. I, I would have, that. I wouldn't, I would not have liked to have blown a tire. So. It sucked. That's all I have to say about that. Here we also, are. our car was fully packed. So we would, have, oh, did you have to take everything out of the car to get to the spare tire? My dad. So basically <laughs> the reason why I couldn't immediately fix it is because we were on 81, which is notoriously dangerous and busy highway. Mm -hmm. And we were on the right side of the road and it was my rear left tire and there was like no shoulder, which means if I were to try and change that tire myself, A, we were packed in with stuff, so getting Mm -hmm. to spare. And B, I would have got killed by a semi truck Um, because it was nighttime and it was like 15 degrees outside. Perfect storm. (laughs) Yeah. So I have AAA, not a big deal. I call them. I get redirected like 50 times before finally, yeah, they'll be there like an hour and a half. And I'd already been on the side of the road for like an hour and a half at this Mm. point. My dad drives, because we're 40 minutes out, so my dad drives over, gets all of our stuff, and my wife and son, and then I sat there and waited for AAA. But the guy came, changed me up. The spare got me to where I needed to get. Is it like a donut spare, or is it a full-size spare? It was a full-size spare. Oh, that's nice. However... But it's a different rim. um, Yeah, and it uh, was definitely... like He pumped it up because it was low, and it definitely lost air on its way back. It's probably dry-rotted. Probably, but I, I survived. There you go. Get a, get a new tire? My car hated it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> Cars. Love them. Cars. Love them to death. Fun stuff, man. Ultimate driving machine. Nothing machines. like a car. Nothing Thanks like again to like Prime, it. though. I don't think you can actually claim someone as a sponsor. It's not a sponsor. That's crazy. I'm pretty like sure I did. didn't say thanks for the sponsor. I said thanks to Prime. They, no, that's true. I'm just thanking them. That's true. Thanks for what you do. all you do, Prime. Thanks Thank to you. Prime. Thanks Prime. for sponsoring, hey. Prime. I didn't say sponsoring us. They sponsor other people. That's true. I don't like this line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with saying it's prime time. All oh, right. It's prime, it's prime time. time. It's prime I'm time. fine with that. It's prime time. This segment is brought to you now, by see? how much we like prime. <laughs> <laughs> it's so That's funny. funny. Uh, not a sponsor. No, but seriously. But like really though, like please. Not a doctor. But seriously, not a though, doctor. they gave lots of money to other companies to push them. <laughs> yeah. But not they us. did. They did. Like Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Soccer, huh? USA? Christian Pulisic? Did you watch the game yesterday? Did you watch a big game? Yep. We won. We're going on to the round of 16. Yeah, man. USA. 5 and 0. Oh. Nope. <laughs> one, and t- 1, 2, and 0. Oh. It was good enough. I finally got a Bass Pro Shops hat. 
You know you can draw in soccer. Am I allowed to get one? Shh. Am I not anymore? Round of sixteen now. So well, there you go. Yeah, but you, you can. Still, you can regular make season. Regular. No. Here's the thing. In the tournament setting, I have no problem with the World Cup tournament setting. You have. You, but I have a problem that just a normal everyday. It's the same thing. Premier though. League, but match. it's the same thing. No, because it's a it's a regular because season. Because you play for points. It's a regular season though. But there's no playoffs. It, if there were playoffs, I would agree with you. It's, no but the, like it's a regular season. Ticks me off. Hate it. It's like not, the fact that it's just like an everyday the re- soccer game. Like you're comparing it to other sports. That's the problem. Yes, that is the problem. I'm comparing it to sports okay. that have better systems. I'm not. Listen, I like who's who's upset that a soccer game goes to a penalty shootout. I here's I would prefer. It's electric. I would prefer Amen. more of the hockey model where. 90 minutes is up, both teams get a point automatically, and then you go straight to a penalty shootout, and then the winner of that gets the three points, loser gets the one. The problem with that is that over the course of the entire season, you keep doing that, and like it's a little brutal because like penalty shootouts are a little too gimmicky. Well, do you want fans to be happy, or do you want points? I wouldn't be happy as a fan. I'm just going to tell you that. You wouldn't be happy to watch a game and no. know that, like, my team. Once you follow can it enough, win. you know that a draw is just a part. Like a draw, if you're a good team, a draw, a draw just feels, doesn't feel complete. A draw, if you're playing a team better than you, a draw feels like a win. If you're playing a team worse than you, it feels you don't like, like to win. It feels like a loss. It's just the way you look at things. That's all it is. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with that. You just did. Got him. Got him. How do you feel about it? You know, I honestly feel like, like, give the people what they want, man. Dang straight. Man of the people. That's like so the funny. guys that do the things, the guys that aren't really nice, I don't think they should be allowed to be. Could not agree more. Am I allowed to get a Bass Pro Shops hat? Yeah, man. You can do whatever you want as long as you, you got $6. A, you should get a white one. Yeah, I don't have it. $6. Last summer they were That's four. That's a deal breaker. Next I told summer Gabby, eight. I, this is what happened. I think I'm going to get the for some reason. One. For some Bright reason, orange. I thought I that the Bass Pro Shops were the not orange. as accessible as they were. Oh, I would. So I was <laughs> Ironically. like, all throughout college, I was like, I want a Bass Pro Shop so bad. But it wasn't because I was, I was into fishing or anything. It was just because I was a trendy person, and it was started to become really trendy for people to wear Bass Pro Shop hats. I need to look at the colors. Fun and I was lifted. like, and I was like, I really want to be that trendy person with a Bass Pro Shop hat as well. But I felt like I'm, I'm from the skateboard world, and in the skateboard world. You, sorry, whenever I say I'm from it, I mean I skateboarded through middle school, like my entire life through middle school and high school. I'm not from the skateboard world, but it's a very big thing. The worst thing you can be called in the skateboard world is a poser because mm-hmm. that's just somebody yes. that, you know, dresses and acts like a skater but isn't a skater, you know? Yeah. And so I still hold that, hold myself to that with everything. I don't want to be a poser. And so I didn't want a Bass Pro Shops hat if I wasn't into fishing because then I just felt like a poser. Right. And now I'm into fishing, and now I'm like, I can have Bass Pro Shop hat. So we went to Cabela's. I bought a pa- No, just kidding. I asked for it for my sister-in-law. She got me a Bass Pro Shop hat, and then I told my wife I wanted one of every color for Christmas. Mm, there you go. She's not going to get it for me. She doesn't like how many hats I have. Bright orange. I want bright orange. I like, like that one. Orange. I like that one. I want the white one, and I want the black Ooh. one, and I want the maroon one. I want one. the light blue one. I'm okay too. with the light blue one. Sick. I don't think it would fit me very mm. well. Carolina blue. I'm more about Duke, sick. you know. Both I feel like I have to be a Duke. I feel like I have to be a Duke fan. You know, my brother-in-law's middle name was Duke. He was named after the really? basketball team. Yep. Mine's in Kentucky. His middle name is Kentucky Duke, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Duke Kentucky. Kentucky. Duke Ucky. Duke. Now, why did Brad Duke-y. not take the Sharpie away? Or the cap. Where did the cap go? Yeah, that's me, that's stressing me out. See, like, it's been I stressing like, me the whole show. I feel like I'm gonna just gonna start drawing on. Stuff. Like I felt like I just like, feel I'm like gonna start no, I, just, I, I felt like the desk already had sharp. No, if they're not a sponsor. Color in the word. You know prime. What? Let's just. Oh, How much so, you trust me, dude? That's a crazy game to play. Where are you gonna throw? That is you. A, that's no, a dude. That's I a can't. crazy not, game. I don't, can't get this crew neck because then up. yeah, then if it like hits your clothing, that dude Sharpie Roulette. Did we just invent a game? You just take like the the most. No, like, do it. All right, do it. The most like no, stainy. I don't want you to like the game. fat Sharpie, some really fresh one. <laughs> you just like spin it and start chucking them. You, you just have, they just have to have a lot of spin. <laughs> yeah, paint marker, shake that thing. No, I think the rule is you just have to you have to let it hit you. And oh. you can't catch oh. it. So it either hits you like the side or the back to where you don't get it or straight on. Oh, throw well, I, used to, mark I used to do no, throwing no, knives and with throwing knives, you have to you have to just kind of like, obviously, if you're in a situation where you actually have to throw a knife, which most people aren't going to use that for self-defense because it's not very practical. I mean, I guess it would be like you're throwing really a knife. I was kind of dirty. I had them at my desk at home. But you would, you would measure 
Because every three feet you would switch from a handle to to blade. Yeah, throwing it from the blade or throwing it from the handle. Because how you had the rotations timed it's actually, perfectly. Actually, every five feet. I don't remember. Can though. you just change it. how much you flick your wrist instead? Mm, because no, that's because not, then because you really want to keep that consistent. Yeah, you, you want, want to keep to your consistent. wrist more solid and throw with your elbow more. Yeah, and cool. so you would know how many times it's going to rotate before. I, it I didn't know. I thought they always threw from the blade. I didn't realize you threw from. No, the, you rotate yep. it back and forth. That's cool. Like now, knife. if you were in like a like sticky situation, yeah, you just grab that thing and chuck. Well, because whether it hits him with the handle or the blade, like it's probably going to freak them out a little. Yeah, or like, you just get ninja stars. I mean, yeah, then it's just going to hit them matter what. I would not like. And, but you also cut mean. yourself on the way throwing it. My brother used to throw ninja stars. Did he cut himself on the way throwing it? No. Dang. Good for Jimmy. What's up? Nothing. I'm just looking at something. He's got an email from. Never mind. Okay. Make it on Prime what what I miss out on, guys? I feel like I I work I missed a total of like three work days. I'm on keto now, and I feel yeah, like I missed too. an eternity because I came I back and you guys were talking. <laughs> Throw it to Connor. Come on. Oh, I've been so electric. No, I don't want to risk it. I appreciate that. He literally said, "Yeah, just do it." Yeah, but I know yeah, but that was because I. It was know, the moment. Like, the moment. Like, was imagine bigger. that thing bounces whenever. up like, and draws a line on his monitor. Like how funny! <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I love the idea of just throwing a sharpie into our desk spaces with the cap off and seeing that's what actually happens. Actually, really funny. Sharpie bomb. Sharpie bomb. <laughs> corn bomb. <laughs> Man, don't forget the corn bomb. What's I sent y'all that TikTok, right? Yeah. There was someone doing it, and, that, that and someone funny. actually getting hit. Yeah, that was funny. Corn bomb. We were going through a corn maze, and I would pick up cobs of corn, just kind of throw it in the air. Yo, yeah. corn bomb! <laughs> That's assault. I did almost hit Trevor's baby. Just once, though. <laughs> just, just once. once. That was like the fine. first one. Yeah, he would have been fine. Yeah, he'd been all right. Terminal velocity of corn is not as high as you would think. What is the terminal velocity of a cob of corn? <laughs> I'll Google it. <laughs> Surely you can't find that. I mean, I know it's an equation. Terminal velocity so sounds can't. like a deathcore band. It probably is. I'd have to guess. I don't think I understand what deathcore means. Who was it? Oh, it was Brad that was informing us that like that one band that we brought up like was not even like a glimpse into the world of like. So uh, I can find a chopped corn, corn silage. Don't know what that is. What is that? It's got to be a corn cob. Corn is- leaf, stalk, and cob pieces were 3.6, 6.8. So I want the cob, I guess cob pieces, 8.8 sure. 8 meters per second. That is not fast. Yeah. That is very slow. How many knots is that? What is a knot? <laughs> like, how does that translate? I well, know it's a know, nautical term. Do you know how the, where they came? How they Literally. got it from was they actually it's one point one five mile per hour. They checked to see the speed of a boat by tying um, a knot in a rope every few feet, and they would no way. yes, they would throw the rope in the water and they would let it slide through their hands and count the amount of knots, and that's how many knots. And per that's how they came up with that. And yep. it's one point five miles. One point one. Five miles per oh, hour. Oh, so it's, it's literally basically it's miles per hour. Pretty much until you get to a crazy speed. I'm pretty sure I was Bear watching Grylls Titanic there that, night, and so. he was like, "We can do up to fifty knots." And I was like, <laughs> "I don't even know what that means." You're watching Titanic. Yeah, um, I have an opinion to share. Is that okay? Go for sure. It. <clears throat> I watched for the first time, for the first complete time. I've seen clips, the movie A Christmas Story, mm-hmm. the other day. Oh, okay. And I have to say. I was not that much of a fan. Would you like to hear why? Yes. Sure. So, I watched the movie, and the entire time, I was like, what a classic. They would just say things, I'd be like, ah, it's a classic. Love this movie, it's a classic. And then it got to the end of the movie, and I was like, huh, I didn't really feel happy at any point during that movie. Everybody in that movie is so mean. There's not really a nice character in there. That's kind of the point, though. But I didn't like that. It didn't make me feel good. It was basically this this really rude kid was trying to get a BB gun. Fine with that part. Shoot your eye out. Hilarious. Um, but <laughs> well, the parents are what makes me laugh in that movie. The dad was was pretty rude. The mom was fine. And then all everybody in that movie was just kind of mean to each other. And then he got the BB gun at the end, shot the thing, lied about it, and it was totally fine. Like, the whole entire movie was just lying and manipulating and no consequences. It was like a story of Christmas with family. That's not. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't think that's like a realistic portrayal of a family in that time? I don't. I I didn't realize that anybody watched that movie for a realistic portrayal. It's my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I understand. It's very hard for me. I I think the only reason was because it was a Christmas movie. Is it really your favorite Christmas movie of all time? Yeah, but Ooh. now wow. let me say that. So this is like you walk in here and you but say is the it Grinch because sucks. it's nostalgic. Yeah, like let me. For now, me, I, didn't have I legitimately, I legitimately think it's a funny movie. However, I've watched that movie 
on Christmas Eve since I was probably five. So mm. like I, I and can't you're telling them that movie's trash. No, I can't be inserted into this argument because I, I am say blinded by nostalgia. I'm blinded by nostalgia. I get that. I'm like that with a lot of movies as well. So like I'm not this gonna, one. Literally, my final conclusion of this movie was that whenever I thought back on it, it didn't make me feel happy to watch it, which I'm not a person that needs to feel happy to watch every movie. I thought the Joker was good and I didn't feel happy during that movie. I felt like a scumbag. And but I still like it just I it was a movie called the Christmas a, a Christmas story. And I was excited for a Christmas movie, and it made me feel like well, I think it tells everybody a Christmas was just story. a brat. Yeah, I say it does tell a it Christmas story. It does Christmas tell story. a Christmas story. You're right. It sounds like you, when you watch a Christmas movie, you want to You good. want Hallmark. I, it, I, all like you would have liked it if the kid walked into a store and found some random chick from a small hometown, went home with her, fell in love, got married just before his girlfriend from the big city made it in time. Hallmark. I saw I just, something on Hallmark. It just didn't make me feel happy. You I know, feel like everybody here's a was Hallmark, bratty. Here's I don't a Hallmark, like bratty, sarcastic people. Here's a Hallmark theory. Mm, I, I like have. sarcasm. I don't. I'm I, not. I don't like it whenever sarcasm, sarcasm is your only trait. I don't like people who are only sarcastic. You don't like me. I like you because I think there's a taste of sarcasm. But, but like their parents, like is the that dad, the only taste? But like, <laughs> but what about like the dads? <laughs> the dads like kind of grumpy the whole time, but then like he buys him the BB gun, and like it's heartwarming. Yeah. Here's a take on like, Hallmark. Yeah. Okay. I have a theory. I don't even know if it is a theory. Hallmark obviously releases so many movies every Christmas. Like if you go on Hallmark, it is hard to watch it the same Hallmark movie more than once. You feel like you do because they all have the same storyline. Yes. Yeah. I think that the whole reason they have the same storyline is because it allows them to produce 15 to 20 movies oh, with yeah. the budget of one movie. Yeah. Somebody and on that TikTok makes them way more money than if they were to just produce because like if Hallmark also they, took, they reuse the same sets. If Hallmark were to take like their sure. budget that they spend on, let's just call it 20 movies a year. I don't know if that's true, mm-hmm. but let's just call it that. They could probably make one solid Christmas movie a year. But they probably know. Sometimes the production, like we're gonna make way more on. Production. See, that's actually the, the problem with uh, not the problem. I don't think. Just to be clear. I don't think there's a problem with Hallmark. I think they do an almost perfect job at what their purpose is, which is to provide you with really cheesy Christmas movies. And yeah, and they're, they're, wa- they're entertaining. And people want to watch really cheesy them. Christmas movies. They're, they're a great. I, there's they're, no. They're a good replacement for The Office during December. Somebody of yeah. like throw it on in the background. Yeah. You can you can pick up at any time because you mm-hmm. know where they're at in the story exactly. by hearing one line. You're like, oh, this is the part where, you know, she's gonna wake up from amnesia and still love the small town. But I think that that's funny. But I think that the reason why you could pick out a, it, it, any clip, pick any clip from any Hallmark movie, and you will know it's a Hallmark movie. And I think the reason is, the and the reason why they look different than other movies, <laughs> and the reason why they look different from other movies is because they're too perfect. The production value is too. They do perfect. shoot them the like lighting, jewelry commercials. Yes, the lighting it looks like is an every always kiss perfect. With K commercial. The background composition is always perfectly because blurry. I think it's with perfect things on the shelves. I think it's because they want them to look warm. Yeah, cozy. they want they want it to be like you're. But you're right though. That is, that is like I saw something on TikTok that literally like they took a bunch of Hallmark movies and looked at the timelines of like yeah. when when like the the when the conflict the conflict is. happens and the resolution and like they're like the exact they're same. Oh, the they've definitely got a timeline written out. That they, yeah. Like they've got a. It's awesome. Yeah, I good. love I love it. Like, are they even making cards anymore? Or are they just making feature films? Come on. And it's so funny how it's like the same actors and actresses and most of them are from Full, full House. I get fascinated. Yeah, I get fascinated by companies and people that, and like this is like, listen, like a lot of businesses, like even Target, for example, just to name a company, like they're going to have huge months around November, December, just because that's how the world works. But there are like certain singers and like the Hallmark channel that their revenue must just look, it must look hilarious when you look at the year revenue and you look at the month of November and December. I don't even know any other Mariah Carey songs. Because that's what I'm saying. Well, like like Mariah Carey, for instance, obviously in her heyday, this probably wasn't the case. But nowadays... Yeah. Well, she was famous before the, she did this. The amount of money she makes off her music yeah. in December probably goes through the roof. Do you think ceiling. when she released that song, she had any idea no. it was going to be No, because it was an it original. Is. And like yeah. original Christmas covers yeah. typically do better. Like her, like Kelly Clarkson has the one... The underneath the tree song, and then the, the like doesn't um 
Ariana Grande, I think, has one. Bieber has that Under the Mistletoe song. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's hard to make an original Christmas song, like, stick. Yeah. Because, like, Michael Buble has made his career, like, his covers of Christmas songs are fantastic. Well, he's, just, he's just Frank Sinatra. Yeah. He made his career off of being Frank Sinatra. That's not very nice, man. That's Don't talk. Why about is that not nice? He covers all of Frank Sinatra songs. It's obviously smack, what he was going don't for. Don't talk smack about Michael Buble. I wasn't talking smack about him. I that said he did a good job. You don't like Michael Buble. I said he did a good job at being unoriginal. It's really hard. That <laughs> is <laughs> hysterically it is wrong. From a, Have you heard Michael from Buble's from other from music? a guy who covers music. When do I ever Michael cover Buble music? You showed us at is least incredible. Five Michael covers. Buble is who Frank Sinatra wishes what did you, he was. I you, don't have how, any problems with covers. What did you I don't play? have any problems Dare with Michael you. Buble. You just said, when have I ever covered music? I've The only times I've seen I said, when do I? Christmas lot, coffee house every year. Well, that's Christmas is different. I'm sorry. I don't know the rules. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you sorry? You have to I, cover Christmas songs. We don't know the rules. I didn't know I the actually, rule. I really, I didn't realize that Jonas so Brothers wait, sung a Christmas wait, song. So we're saying that Michael Bublé, oh! the only music, <laughs> gosh, the only music he's ever released is his Christmas album. No, I know, <laughs> I know his Christmas album is not the only thing he's ever released. <laughs> Did you think but that, that was exactly his most popular that point? <laughs> no, he was just saying like that, that that he's just a copy of Frank the Sinatra. Only, the only listen, well, he, he, he said I all mean, he does is cover his songs. Bull crap. I didn't say all he does is cover no. That's his what you said. I said he did cover all of his songs. All of them. Every single one. I don't feel like it's you know what? for I'm me. I'm going to Google Frank Sinatra. That is a funny and I'm a game to play. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. What are we saying Where, right I don't know. I don't know I, just yet. to be clear, I don't have a problem with Michael Just to be clear, Connor, it's too late. You already made Welcome your... Welcome back <laughs> to the podcast, baby. <laughs> the, let's go to the Christmas collection. <clears throat> the Christmas waltz. Has Michael Bublé covered it? I do not know. I don't know either. The Little Drummer Boy, everyone's covered that. Are you coming after for King and Country? I don't remember. Coming Are they after just a Frank no. Sinatra copycat? <laughs> uh, the Christmas songs. I heard the bell on Christmas Day. Christmas memories. A lot of these Frank Sinatra probably covered. Twelve Days of Christmas. We think Frank Sinatra wrote that. Frank Sinatra definitely covered all those. Silent. So then, who who is Michael Bublé really copying? I didn't say he's covering Frank Sinatra's Christmas songs. That's what I heard. Uh, Mariah Carey makes about six hundred thousand to a million dollars in royalties a for one hit every year. That's not what I'm looking for. That's not what I was looking for either. I want to know how much she makes off of all I want for Christmas. I mean, she was singing it um, in the, from 1996. On Parade. Did you watch that? By the yeah, way, yeah, I did. Like, imagine so, how much okay, she was paid go. to stand there with that umbrella and so listen. So from 1990, she had a teleprompter too. From 1996 to 2016, she, she averaged $2.6 million a year off of All I Want for Christmas is You, just that song. To what year? 1996 to 2016. See, I feel like just since 2016, it's boomed even more. She was averaging $2.6 million a year in royalties off of just one song for Christmas. That's awesome. That's so All I Want for Christmas is You. That not that crazy? Like, if you write... If you write a hit that, that can stand the test of time like that, Do you it. could that could be your living. You could retire and just live off of that. Show up in the Macy's Day She could effective, effectively live off of that song alone for the rest of her life. You. <laughs> so are like, you saying that I'm just a Mariah Carey copycat now? <laughs> no, you're a Frank Sinatra. You're a Frank It's prime Carey. time, baby. <laughs> Thanks again to prime. I went right down. Would they go to window pipe? Went down a windpipe. <laughs> Thanks to Prime. Prime went down a windpipe. Thanks to Prime for making a drink I love. Thanks to Prime. They really do not sponsor for everything really you do. <laughs> oh my gosh, we really do just like Prime. I mean, there's not a single soul that doesn't believe this is sponsored. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I do that so much. Uh, well, it was because I was trying to be, I was trying to tickle your humorous. I just do it <laughs> normal in normal day to day life. Um, uh, have you guys done all your Christmas shopping yet? I not a quite. Little bit. I've shopped for. I'm pretty much done. I think I maybe have like one or two things to get. Pretty much done. And boy, did it hurt! I've I got seven people to buy for still. So. That's a lot. Mm. Oh, I, I haven't think I've done got any like Christmas. One and a half. Well, I've done some Christmas shopping for my family. Just kidding. Gabby ordered a lot of books for my family. <laughs> I gotta buy. Well, I'm still at a dilemma because in those seven, I included my brother and sister and their kids. Um, but we had made a verbal agreement 
my brother and sister and I to not get gifts to only buy gifts for each other's kids now that we all have kids but you know they're going to get gifts anyways but I I just know my siblings and I know they're going to buy gifts for me so you're going to get them so I want to get them gifts but I don't want to show up on Christmas day and them not have bought me gifts You you just keep them in the car and then and then see how it plays out. Yeah. But then what do I do with the return, gifts after return them? Yeah. Yeah. Give them to me. Even. That might be the play. Because I don't want to show up empty-handed and they hand me gifts and I'm the scumbag. Yeah. Just get them gifts that but me I and also Trevor would also like. Or even, I don't want to also play the game and then be the person who's like, oh, so y'all didn't give me a gift, but I got you one. That's not what I would say. But that's what my gift. That's what my gift would say <laughs> as I handed say. it to them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. Because say, like there's a verbal agreement. Yeah. That we weren't getting gifts. You're gonna have to get it in paper next year. I think so. On not on paper. No, I don't even think paper. that would matter. I'm a registered notary. Really? That no. would be so helpful if you were. Can one of us? How how hard is that? I would can love we make to be that a bed? Hard. Can we make that a bed that the to loser a has to like figure out how to become a notary? No, I want to be a notary. I don't know why, but that seems like an honor. How lucrative is that? Probably very. Like, cause like you obviously can charge a notary. Like as a side hustle, if I just became a notary and I was like, yeah, you can. By appointment, anytime from this to then, this day to this day, you can come pay f- some amount of money, and I'll just sign something for you. How much you charging? It. That's what I'm saying. Like I feel like you can charge the 50 bucks for average it. notary signing agent salary in Virginia is thirty nine thousand. And but like that's a salary. So yeah, I don't but really like know. let's say let's say you can do a third of that in a year, just doing it as a side hustle. You can make okay, ten here. grand a year. How much can I earn? That's a Bugatti. <laughs> More than half of all full time mobile. What's full time? We'll part-time or self-employed notaries 43% of all part-time self-employed notaries earn more than $500 a month 30% earn more than 1000 a month How does What does it look like to be a part-time oh, notary? Part-time, here you go Part-time mobile notaries Data for 2017 through in 2020 uh, 46% in 2020 Made 250 or less a month 26% made between 250 to 1000 a month. This is part-time. 24%, 25% made between 1000 to 4000 a month. 2% part-time made between 4000 to 7500 a month. Looking at me like that. And half a percent made <laughs> 7500 a month or more. Bro, for part-time. How notary. do you become a notary? Look this up. How to become a notary? How Are we all going to become, become notaries? Can we be like notary. the notary bros? Yes. The no bros? The notary brothers. The Notary Brothers. How That's come a, a sick notary the merch we could do? The Notary Agency. Think about how sick. The Notary. What rhymes the okay. Notary? So this explains. Potpourri. You we make, have a phone for the Notary and we call it the Notary Rotary. There you go. <laughs> you make sure you meet all the state's requirements. You have to see below. So uh, I don't know where don't, they're at. I've been in jail. Uh, complete and print an application form. Pay the $45 uh, application fee. I don't have a printer. You'll receive an online receipt. Have your signature on part three of the application notarized. Uh, so you got to you got to have a notary to become a so notary. This is just, it's just this is a multi level marketing. This is a pyramid scheme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mail your notarized application and receipt to the office of the secretary. If you're approved, a notice will be sent to you within sixty days. Contact the circus court, circuit court. To take your oath and pay ten bucks. What? It's that easy? Uh, optional insurance, but strongly recommended. But seems like minimum. Fifty-five dollars total to become a notary, bro. I'd like seem, to be a notary. It seems like an old school hustle. Like it seems like everybody's worried about day trading and crypto. Just, just become, become a, notary, a notary, baby. <laughs> become the notary rotary. How like if how I, often do you need a notary? That is the question. The only time in my life I've needed a notary is number one, getting a car title transferred, and that's a thing that happens quite often. Like if you bought a car, yeah, or if you're giving it to somebody. Um, number two, getting my work permit before I turned whatever age you need, don't need it for anymore. I had to get that notarized uh, when I first started working a job. I had to get my dog notarized. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> Here's what I'll tell you. That's funny. Here's what I'll say. I don't know if it happens that often, but when it happens, it's it can be an inconvenience. And I'm the guy that'll make it convenient for you. We can meet at the coffee shop and I'll just notarized. You don't want stamped notarized. I'm telling you, as much as it's ridiculous, it, so like, like, what in the world? Is that the best side gig ever? No, I think the problem illegal- is that a lot of places that consistently need notaries already have them. Like hired. in the house? 
So yeah. like it's a rare occasion that you as a just like a normal person well, going about apparently life, not because know. apparently percentage wise these people are making a few hundred bucks well, a month. I would month. bet like I would bet if you became like the notary that the car dealership goes to like if that's what I'm saying. I think it's a connections game. It's a connections game. For Definitely sure. a connections game. Surely there's notary work in real estate. Yeah, that's you what I'm see, saying. You become the notary of like a bunch of different real estate agents. Yeah. It's like, oh. hey, I can run your social media. Oh, I also do notary work. Bro. Included in the package. Or like, I do notary work. Period. Like, Period. That's it. Bro, I'm going to become a notary. No balls. Can I tell you guys one more story? Yeah. Just one more though. So this one I will not leave in any specifics because this is it. This is the final story this, of the show. This is this, wrapping up the show. This includes suck. illegal activity. Oh gosh. Oh no. So my friends, I know exactly that I went about. and saw, and I will just say Indiana. I won't say the the okay. town or anything. Oh, you mean mm, mm. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, so my friends that I went and saw in Indiana, they said, "Oh, we got to tell you the story about how we got our cat neutered." And I was like, this sounds like an interesting story. <laughs> so they knew, they they know these people with like a lot of animals. And they were like, oh, if you need to get your cat neutered, we know a lady that will do it. And she's re- she only charges 50 bucks to get your cat neutered. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll definitely do that. And they like trusted her. They trusted that family because like they bucks. have like a ton, of, they have a ton of animals. <laughs> They're not that using a sedative. They have like a ton of animals that they that they take like really good care of and that they really care about. So like obviously if they got their animals neutered with her, then they ob- it's obviously not that sketchy. Yeah. And so they were like, okay, yeah, we'll do that. So, but they weren't allowed to drive to her house. The friends that they knew that knew the lady came and picked them up in their van with the cat and the carrier, and they all drove there together. And um, they got to the driveway and turned down this long driveway that had gargoyles all down it. And like this really long driveway. And so eventually, I'll call, I'm going to, for the sake of the story, I'm not going to say this lady's real name because it is illegal. Um, but I'll just call her Martha. That's not her name. I was thinking Meredith, but Martha works. And so Martha. they get out of the, they get out of the car, like their friends get out of the car and they're like, Martha. Martha, where are you at? Martha. And they're just at this house. And this lady comes around the corner. Martha, this, sh- you know, just shorter lady in a big sweatshirt comes around the corner of the house. And she's like, oh, hey there. Are you guys here to get another one neutered? And they were like, yep. And so they walk in the house with the cat. And they walk in the house. And it's like a normal house. Kind of kind of cluttered, but like a normal house. And they walk down to the basement. Normal basement. And then she opens the door. A door in this basement. And it is, there's a metal operating table in this room. She's a serial killer. With one spotlight oh just shining down on bro. it with a bunch of surgical tools on the table in a pool of did blood. You, did your friend think he was about to die? A N- pool at this point, of blood? they still trusted her because, again, the people that they knew. Like, they I would have really well. thought, like I, like, I don't know anyone well enough uh-huh. for them to take me into that situation. I can't drive, right? Like if you if like, if you were like, hey, we're gonna go to this person's house, blah, whatever story to get me in a scenario, where and you tell me I can't drive, right, and whatever, and I trust you, so I get in the car, and then you take me to the basement, and someone just like opens like a secretive door, and then there's a metal operating room. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm about to die. Like I'm turning and running out yeah. of there and just getting to the road. So they were they were like a little bit sketched out, but again, the family that took them there, they really trusted, and so yeah. So, like I said, all these operating tools on the table covered in blood. And she's like, oh, sorry, I had a dog to neuter this morning. Um, and uh, this, this morning, she had plenty of time to clean it up. It wasn't morning anymore. Anyway, so she goes over to the table and just scoops up all the tools and puts them on a different table. And they're like, you can put them right here. <laughs> and so they put the cat there. And um, thing. she said, well, it's only going to take me about 15 minutes. You guys can watch if you'd like. And they're like, no, we're good. So they go upstairs. And then sure enough, like uh, 20 minutes later, she comes up and she was like, I would have been done a long time ago, but I had to trim his nails too. And um, they, she was like, but it's all done. He's all good to go. And she brought the cat back up and they were terrified because when they brought the cat back up, it was like, like completely frozen solid and its eyes glossed over, but open. It looked like it was dead, but it was still sedated. 
And um, well, she's mustard gas. Yeah, and because usually whenever you get that done, <laughs> you pick up the animal like an hour or so after it's done, so they're yeah. kind of woken up. But like this animal is still basically dead. And they, he said, whenever we brought it out, my fr- my um, so was my friend and his wife were the ones oh my whose cat it gosh. is. He said that his wife was like, <gasps> like audibly, and she was like, oh, don't worry, he's he's alive. I promise you, he's alive. He's not dead. Um, <laughs> If you're ever in a scenario that you have to make that promise, you're in the wrong scenario. I promise you. She said, his eyes are a little gooey because I had to put gel on there because he wouldn't close them. So I wanted to keep him from dehydrating. So he has some I mean, goo that's on a, his eyes. That's, that's, that's a reasonable precaution. It sounds like this is a vet that got she their is. license removed. So she is a vet. Actively. And just does this as a side hustle. Yes. That's the illegal Now, part. why? <clears throat> why the side hustle? So then this... I don't know. So then this... Fascinating. So then Under the table, my friend... Baby. Um, like, uh, she goes to work and she works with somebody who is a vet. She's like, um, is it illegal to do like personal neutering, like in your basement? And the lady was like, yes, very illegal. Who was this person? (laughs) And then she was like, nobody, (laughs) nothing happened. She didn't turn her in. No, no, because she got like in a lot of trouble. Who the, your friend? Probably both of them. Yeah, who knows? Aiding and abetting, man. I don't know. I'm not getting tied to that crime either. I'd be like, nothing. I'm turning them in. Hypothetical. Have fun in jail, bro. No, because like I got swindled into this whole thing. You agree? I didn't even you get saw to drive. the whole situation. I was I was being held hostage. I didn't even have my car there. But no the signal. Cat, I'm in a basement. You might be able to sell that. It's been months since then. The cat's totally fine and neutered. Well, I mean, it's a vet. Here's the question: the Is question it illegal? Why? Is it illegal for somebody who has a veterinarian's license? Yes. That, Okay. To do it in their own home, yes. Okay, I say like, or because like, if you're just a random person, like, is that illegal? And it's kind of a weird law, it, yeah. Because like a random person, I understand it being illegal, but someone who like, mm, well, I don't know, no, I get it on I a think human. Re- I, think I like, get it on a human, like. I think like reverse. I think if you're a vet, like, it makes sense that you're signing that like you are not gonna practice this outside of your practice. But as a normal person, I feel like you'd have no laws tying you to the neutering of animals. Well, I think that would be just like. Malicious wounding. I knew something. people who used to live on a what? farm, and the way that they would neuter their goats is just by wrapping rubber bands. Yeah, that's their bulls. Yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, that's just, that's, I mean, that's a common thing. It just falls, falls off. off yeah. yeah, that's. But that's like a very what's the difference? Should that's a very that? humane way to. Is it? Yeah, that'd be because it, it's painless. It cuts the circulation off. Yeah, well, they, don't she, the cat was uh, was put to sleep. Well, yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying is pain afterwards. Yeah, you can wake up and be like, "What am I not at? <laughs> I'd definitely rather them be surgically removed than you just wrap a rubber band. Well, well yeah, that's just like a that like that's, very that's, a, that's a farm thing in history. Yes, it I'm is. Just yeah, like yes, that's a very you also be thing. very aware of it as well because <laughs> you're not a dumb yeah. animal. Yeah, you're right. But are we talking about a human? What? When did that no. switch happen? I don't know. Just now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's banter. <laughs> that was a great. That was a great banter. What the frick? Thanks again to Prime. Gosh, not a sponsor.